everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. Today, I am going to be diving into the dilemma that some of you might have because you are practicing your affirmations, you are doing visualization, you're meditating, you're doing all the right things, but sometimes the desire is not manifesting. So if you've ever experienced this or you feel like some of your desires aren't manifesting, this one is for you. Hi everyone, my name is Pyle Agarwal and I want to welcome you to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. Affirmations have changed my life and now it is my mission to help you use them to change yours by using affirmations every day to manifest things your way. My goal is to make affirmations attainable and accessible to every single person, including you, because you have the ability to take control and create your reality. So come with me on my journey and let's see what we can manifest together. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. And just thank you so much for joining today's episode. And if you're here, I know that you have practiced a lot of affirmations before. You've done a lot of visualization and you've done a lot of things to try and manifest something. But for some reason, there's something blocking. And so in today's episode, I'm going to go through five reasons that your manifestations might not actually be manifesting. There's different ways and different things that we might be doing consciously or unconsciously that are actually blocking us from getting what we really want. So I'm going to go through step by step, five different reasons, five different things that you might be doing without even realizing it that is actually preventing you from experiencing your desires in your current reality. And so if this is something you've ever struggled with, I highly recommend grabbing a notepad or taking some notes on your phone just so that you can learn from this episode and actually take away what you need to remember. And so starting off, when you are trying to manifest, when you're trying to get something in your reality, the first thing we might be doing wrong is going to seem really counterproductive. It's going to seem very paradoxical. And you might be actually focusing so much on the fact that it's not currently in your reality. Yes, you heard that right. The number one reason that you might not be actually able to manifest what you're trying to is you're focusing so hard on the fact that it's not actually here. And that's what's very contradictory to the universe. And it really, really blocks your manifestations because as we all know, energy is what guides the law of attraction and law of vibration. And so when you are focusing on the lack of of your manifestation and the lack of what you really want, you're actually attracting more of that lack. You are manifesting more of the lack. And see, the thing with manifestation is we're always manifesting. It's not an on and off button. You're always manifesting with every thought you think, with every action you take, with every vibration you emit. You are always in the process of manifestation. So it never stops. So whenever you focus on the fact that something isn't there, you're actually going against your efforts. You're actually giving the universe mixed signals because at one point you're telling the universe, hey, I really, really want this. This is what I want. I'm so excited it's coming. And that's when the universe is like, okay, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to start creating it energetically. I'm going to start creating different ways and pathways for it to come into your reality. But then a few days later, you notice that that manifestation is not in your reality and you start to give the universe mixed signals. You're focusing on the fact that, oh wait, I don't have this. I don't have it. And you start feeling things like fear and worry and stress. Then you start attracting those types of things and you're giving the universe mixed signals. And that's a really, really simple thing that we all probably do, but it's probably the biggest blocker there is out there. So next time you are in the process of manifesting something or even whatever you're manifesting right now, think about the way you perceive it. Think about the energy you're emitting and think about what you're actually focusing on. Are you focusing on the fact that the manifestation is on its way or are you focusing on the fact that it's not here yet? Those are two very, very different energies. And that's why I think it's a huge benefit if you're able to shift yourself from, you know what, it's on its way versus, 
oh my gosh, it's not here yet. The universe will deliver things to you very, very differently the second you make that shift. So the next time you start to notice yourself worrying or freaking out because your manifestation is not in your current reality, try shifting that attention. And remember, the second you set your intention, the universe starts the manifestation process. The universe is starting to conspire different ways for it to show up into your reality. So the second you think about your manifestation, it's becoming on its way. It is starting to come to you. And even if it doesn't feel like it, just remind yourself that it's on its way. Don't remind yourself that it's not here yet. And so if you are someone who do who struggles with this, I recommend the affirmation, everything I want for me is on its way to me. Because you're reminding yourself that things are coming, even if you don't see it, even if you don't know it, even if you don't feel it. So feel free to repeat this affirmation as needed. Whenever you notice yourself focusing on the lack, just shift your attention, repeat that affirmation so you can calm your mind down and just remind yourself, you know what, it is coming to me. All right, and the next reason, so this is number two, the reason that you might not be able to manifest what you're currently in the process of manifesting is because you're not focusing on the amazing things that you have. You're not completely grateful for everything you're surrounded by. And I have a little story for you on this one. When I was working my corporate job, I hated going into the office. Like it brought me so much like anxiety going into my client sites and going into the office because I just wanted to work from home. Give me all the work. I just wanted to be at home. I'm so much more comfortable. I feel so much more aligned. I hated sitting in two hours of traffic. I just didn't like any of that. And I'm sure a lot of you experience the same thing. So what I would do, I would be struggling and I would focus on how horrible my job is, how much I hate my life. And I would be so upset and always in a bad mood. I wouldn't really appreciate everything that this job is actually giving me. Even though I didn't like it, even though it wasn't my ideal situation, I wasn't focusing on the fact that my job is actually providing me some money to travel. My job also paid me to travel and I was able to see Tom every weekend and every week, not on my own money, but on my company's dime. They would actually pay for me to travel back and forth to my sites. And so they were covering that. And that was a huge thing for me was to be able to see Tom and my family. I had the best of both worlds in that. I didn't appreciate the fact that my job was allowing me to live in one of my favorite cities, which was San Francisco at the time. I wasn't appreciating that I only worked four days a week. And on Fridays, I would work from home. I wasn't even happy with that. That wasn't enough for me. So all I could do was focus on how upset this job was making me but one day I was like you know what nothing is getting better I'm still super unhappy why don't I just practice gratitude for all the things that this job is giving me even though it's not my ideal and that's what made that shift I sat down one day after work and I practiced gratitude I literally sat down and said 10 things I was thankful for about my job and I just sat and sat with it and kept kind of experiencing the things that I actually liked about my job and I just repeated what I was thankful for once or twice and I kid you not the next day my boss texted me and was like hey you can come in late to work you've been working really hard Then the week after I got a new project that was in Seattle, which is where Tom was. And I was going back to my old project and so many things just started going better with work. The second I practiced my gratitude and the second I just accepted my current reality. Sometimes we have so much resistance towards what we're experiencing and we think that every single aspect of our life is horrible, even though that's not true. Yes, you might not be feeling your best. Yes, this might not be your ideal situation, but there is always something you can find gratitude for, whether it's the fact that you are at least making some money through a paycheck, whether it's the fact that you at least have a parent, even if you don't have a good relationship with them, you at least have a mother figure or a father figure because some people don't have that. So whatever kind of situations or struggles you're experiencing, there's always a way to find gratitude and appreciation for that. And I also call this accepting my current reality because sometimes we put so much energy towards what we really want, we forget about what we already have and we're just so 
unhappy with what we have and we think it's the worst thing ever. But if you take a second and just understand where you are, you will be more surprised that you're a lot more blessed than you think. You have a lot more blessings. You have a lot more advantages. You have a lot more opportunities than a lot of people in this world. And practicing gratitude for that will just completely shift your vibration. And the reason this is very powerful also in terms of law of attraction and helping with your manifestations is because the second you can focus on what you have and appreciate what you do have, the universe will understand that you don't take things for granted. The universe will understand that you know how to acknowledge what you're actually experiencing and you won't just take it for granted. And the second that you do that, the universe will start delivering you more things that you can be grateful for, more things that you can feel gratitude for and get excited about because the energy of gratitude and the feeling of gratitude is a positive feeling. So you will be attracting more things that make you feel that positive and gratitude and that excitement for what you actually have, even though it's not your ideal. You're not settling. You're at least just appreciating what you have. Some people get a little confused when practicing gratitude because they think that if they're completely happy with everything that they have, they're not leaving room for more. They're telling the universe that, oh, I'm settling and I don't need more. That's not true. Being grateful for what you have allows you to actually understand the value of it and it'll help you understand the value of what else is coming. It's kind of like if everything was handed to you easily, you wouldn't really appreciate it. But if things are handed to you and you are able to appreciate it, there's a difference in that and the universe will happily deliver. So if you ever do feel like you're not grateful for what you have or you haven't taken the time to appreciate your current reality, try this. Take two to three minutes and just practice a gratitude rampage. You literally can do this on paper or out loud and just say, thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. And you just say a bunch of things you can be thankful for. And I promise you, there's no way not to feel good after doing that. So if you ever find yourself frustrated or stressed out, try this. It's a really powerful way. I call it like a gratitude rampage to shift your vibration. And this is kind of how I do it. So I'll start and be like, thank you for this chair. Thank you for this microphone. Thank you for my followers. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for my life. Thank you for this breath. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for Mount Rainier. Thank you for my family. Thank you for Tom. Thank you for my fiance. Thank you for everything I'm experiencing. And that's how you do it. You just go, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you cannot feel good. I just did that. And I like my eyes literally feel brighter. I don't know how to explain it, but it's a very transformational process and it requires nothing of you except your acknowledgement. Okay, so the third reason that your desires might not be manifesting into your physical reality is you don't really know why you want it. Sometimes we have an understanding that this is our ideal. For example, we all live in these patterns, right? Like, You grow up, your parents raise you, you go to middle school, you go to high school, you go to college, you get a job, you get married, you raise your kids to do that same thing all over again. And so we're all sometimes on autopilot. We're stuck in these habits and we think we know the next step because that's what's good for society. But when we're manifesting things and a lot of us are manifesting things like soulmates or jobs or good test results, those are big manifestations that we all want because it's societally approved and most of us want that because it's just generally approved and looked up upon and we don't really know why we want it. We don't know why it will serve us. You don't know like why my highest self wants this new job. Do I want this new job so I can prove to my parents that I am a smart kid? Do I want this new job so I can show my friends that I am just as smart as them? Do I want this new job so I can make a salary and show people that I'm living in a really cool place? Or do I want this new job because I am so fiercely passionate about what I'm doing? What's the intention behind what you really want? Sometimes we think we know what we want because it's the next step in life. It's the most logical thing to do. It's the next step in that big pattern, but we don't ask ourselves why we want it. Once you know your why, what's driving you and why that manifestation is so important to you, you'll really understand what 
it takes to get there. You'll be able to have a real passion and a real excitement and a real inspirational energy behind that manifestation that there's no choice but for it to come in your life. And I'll give you a couple examples that I think a lot of us might struggle with. So starting off, I think a lot of us want a soulmate, right? We want a soulmate and why do we want it? I don't know. You want it because you think that person will make you happy. You think that's the next step in life. You think that you have to get married in order to be accepted in society. You think that that person will be able to be your best friend and always be by your side. All of those are actually signs of just you need to improve on your self-love. And if you take the time to take a little bit of reflection, understand why you really want it, you'll realize that you're just looking for more love And then you'll realize that you want more of your own love and then you'll start focusing on your own love and then your soulmate will literally manifest within a few weeks. But that doesn't happen to most of us. We don't think that way and that's not natural and I get that. That's not the way our society has raised us to think, but that's actually the way you can break down your beliefs and question yourself and poke holes into everything you know because sometimes we don't realize that What we want isn't for our greatest benefit. What we want is just because we think that's what we're supposed to be having next. So the next thing that you want, ask yourself why you want it. Really understand what are you chasing in that manifestation? Is it a certain feeling? Is it a certain level of approval? What is it that's driving that manifestation? Just because the second you understand your why, you can start channeling that immediately. Because for example, for me, I really want my app, which is launching soon, to be successful. I want it to reach the masses. But why do I want it to be successful? Do I want it successful so I can prove to my parents that quitting my job was okay? Do I want it to be successful so that my ego is satisfied and that I don't have a failed project? Or do I want it to be successful so that more people can understand the power of their words and more people can empower themselves and not suffer in life? My why is the third reason and that's what motivates me. And that's why I started this business. And so I channel that why every single day I'm able to channel that inspiring idea, that fierce passion I have within me to help people understand that they already have everything they need and they can shift their reality just because they speak to do so. You know, so that's what drives me. And I channel that energy every single day, which helps me attract more of that energy. It helps me attract more of what I want and manifest more of what I want. A lot of people ask me, how did I get my Instagram to grow so quickly? How did I get my business to be so successful when I had no idea? And that's the thing. I knew exactly why I wanted to do it even though my reasons were small. At first, my reasons were just to prove to myself that I could be my own entrepreneur and I could be my own boss. That's where my why started and it started to shift more and more and more. But it's okay if your why shifts. Your why can be as small as I want to be able to take my family on a fully paid trip. Or your why could be like, I want to feed a lot of people on this world. Your why could be, I want to climb to the top and make changes as a big CEO of a huge company. That can be your why, but get to know your why so you can channel that same energy because the more excitement and power and emotion you have into the energy of what you're trying to manifest, the more quickly it'll come. It's kind of like getting more clarity as to why you want to do it rather than just blindly trying to manifest just because you're trying to play the game of manifestation and just because you're trying to just check off a box like, oh, I manifested this and that's done. So really, really get to know your why. And if you're struggling with this and if you don't know what your why is, say this affirmation. I am in complete harmony with my purpose. And that will really, really help you understand why you want what you want in all forms. You'll just get more clarity about why you're here, what you're doing, and why you want the things you want. All right, number four. So the fourth reason is I think my favorite reason because a lot of us do this. The fourth thing that you might be doing wrong that might be preventing you from manifesting what you want is that you are basing your happiness on that manifestation actually happening. Everybody I know has at least said this once that I will be happy when blank, right? I will be happy when I get that new job. I will be happy when I'm a millionaire. I will be happy when I'm married. I will be happy when I have kids. I will be happy when something happens. And I hate to tell you this because it is so 
exciting and almost like a fantasy when you can think that your future is going to be so bright and happy and that's a beautiful thing but why can't your present be just as happy why can't you be just as happy in your current situation you can you literally have the power to choose and I know that that's going to ruffle some feathers because some people aren't able to be happy all the time and that's okay we're not meant as humans to be happy all the time but we are meant to choose our emotions we have have the full consciousness, we have the free will to feel the way we want to feel. So when you're basing your happiness on your future manifestations, you're not happy right now. And law of attraction states that like attracts like. Law of vibration says that similar vibrations will attract similar vibrations. So you're not attracting happiness. You are not going to attract happiness if you're only thinking you'll be happy in the future. You've got to be happy now. Find some way or something that makes you happy now so you can continue to attract your happiness. Your happiness is completely up to you. And even if that seems so cliche and annoying almost to hear because we all know this, but you don't want to accept it, you can literally choose to be happy now. And that's it. It's just because you don't need a reason to be happy. Your manifestations are exciting. They're freeing. But in order to manifest them, you've got to feel good right now. And I'm sure you've all been familiar with the teachings of Abraham Hicks. And all that Abraham talks about is the power of feeling good. If you can feel good right now, you will always feel good because your energy right now is continuously attracting the energies you will continue experiencing. And that's why they say don't expect your happiness to come from a certain manifestation or a physical experience because you're just basing it off of something. You can feel good by doing nothing and you can feel good by by successfully accomplishing every single thing you wanted to accomplish. There's no difference in that, just your perception. So if you do find yourself saying, oh, I will be happy once my manifestation occurs, I recommend switching that and saying and repeating to yourself, I choose to feel good right now because I have the power to choose how I feel. That is one of my favorite affirmations to start my day with because it's such a refreshing reminder that I can choose how I feel no matter what I'm going through, no matter what circumstances I'm experiencing. And that drives me forward so much farther than, oh, I'm going to be happy once my business reaches a million dollars. That's not going to do anything. If I my business was a million dollar business, I would feel the same way I feel right now. I would feel excited. I would still be creating podcasts. I would still be doing this. So why why wait until that future moment? Why not start now? And that's what I really hope you take away from this point is that you don't have to wait for something to occur for you to be happy. You can still be happy knowing that it's occurring. It's in the process of manifesting. So just because you don't see it in your physical reality doesn't give you an excuse to not be happy. So shift your awareness and allow yourself to be happy just because, maybe for no reason at all, Maybe because you're alive and we take life for granted. We take our breath for granted. Maybe that's your reason to be happy because you woke up today. You're still alive. You're still breathing. You might not have had another chance at life today. That's your good reason to be happy because some people, I know there's some people out there who are going to be like, well, Pyle, I have nothing going right for me. How can I be happy? You're still living. You should be happy because this life is so precious. It is so difficult to even literally scientifically become a human and be successfully born and get that sperm cell to become an actual baby. Like that takes a lot of magic and that's why you're here. And that should be more than enough reasons for you to be happy, even if you quote unquote feel that nothing is going your way. So I know that was a little bit of a scolding for some of you, but I just really, really hope that you don't base your happiness on outside things. Your happiness can literally come from inside just because you want to be. You can be happy even if you're about to get fired from a job that you really like because you're still alive, because you still have a family to go home to, because you still have a car, because you still have something, you still have your soul, you still have your inner being. That can be your reason no matter what. You don't have to be emotionally reactive to the situations and to the experiences you're living. You can choose to feel the way you want to feel no matter what external circumstances you're experiencing. 
and your outer world is just an ex- a reflection of your inner world. So the happier you are just because, just for no reason, the happier your outer world will be. And that I know that sounds so cliche, that sounds way too good to be true, but it is, it is true. I've experienced it before. I have been happy through some of the ho- most horrible situations and I've moved past them and experienced the biggest breakthroughs throughout my life by just choosing happiness, choosing to feel good, choosing to control my emotions through some of the hardest situations rather than depending it on once the situation is over, I'll be happy. You can feel happy in whatever moment you want to and that's completely up to you. Your manifestations do not have to be the only thing that bring you happiness. So I hope that fourth one really resonated with a lot of you. And now for the last one, number five. A lot of you are telling me, and you're probably listening to this episode because this sounds like you. Pile, I've been practicing my affirmations. I've been meditating. I've been practicing visualization. I write down my affirmations. I do everything in order to manifest. And that's what you're doing wrong. You're practicing these things in order to receive. And that's basically saying that you're doing these things because you know they're not here yet. You're affirming with the conflicting energy. Your energy is almost like a begging energy. It's almost desperate because you feel like you're doing these things in order to get something, but that's not true. Once you set an intention, the second you state, I am worthy of receiving a million dollars, the universe is going to start working towards that. It might not happen today. It might not happen a year from now. It might take five years, but the universe is always listening. The reason we actually practice affirmations and visualizations is to help our minds and that's to help us. The more you repeat an affirmation doesn't make it more likely for it to manifest. The reason we repeat affirmations is actually to help our minds be okay with that happening. Most of the time we have so much resistance towards these things showing up in our life. We repeat those affirmations to release our inner resistance. Affirmations and visualization are not to help you help the universe. It's not to give the universe more nudges and signals. The universe heard you once and it's already working on it. That's not the case. These affirmations are for you and your benefit. And so the next time you practice your affirmations, go in with the energy that I'm affirming these because I already have it. I know it's already on my way. I know the universe is already manifesting them. Don't go into your affirmations with, okay, I'm affirming this. So my manifestation will come true. Those are two very, very different energies. When you affirm because something isn't in your life yet, you're going to continue affirming it not to be in your life. That goes back to that first point. You're focusing on the fact that it's not there. When you're affirming, try going in with, I'm affirming because I'm just re-validating the fact that this is in my life. You're not affirming just so you can try sprucing up some magic and putting more momentum on the manifestation. You're affirming just because you're so grateful that it's on its way. So when you affirm, instead of practicing it with this attitude of, okay, the number of times I receive, I affirm means I'm more likely to receive it. That's not true. The more you affirm, the more your mind can believe it and the more your mind can accept that it's actually happening. Your mind is your biggest blocker because your mind is not ready to accept these things just showing up in their life and working out exactly the way you want them to. You are working with your inner mind and your inner world. You're not working only with the universe. You're working with yourself. And so that's kind of a big thing. I know it's a little confusing and very paradoxical, but you're going to learn that manifestation is the biggest paradox and it always will be. You're going to basically learn, and I already know you know this, but you're going to basically learn that you have to be super clear about what you want, but then you have to let go of it. And how do you do that? That's such a paradox. And that's the same thing with this. You're not practicing your affirmations in order to manifest. You're practicing these affirmations in order to let your mind see the manifestation. That's why you're practicing them. The manifestation is already on its way. It's already in process. It's just the fact that your mind needs to be willing and able to see the manifestation in your physical reality. And so just to recap that last point, because I know that's a lot of information thrown at you, When you practice these different tools and techniques, 
because you want to receive something, you basically believe that your manifestations are dependent upon those tools. And that is not true. Your manifestations are completely dependent on your vibration and on the way you're thinking and the thoughts that you're thinking. They're not dependent on these types of tools. They're dependent on the way you are carrying yourself in this physical reality. So these tools are just to help you rather than they're not the reason that these things are manifesting. The reason these things are manifesting is because your mind is ready to see them. And so next time you go into either doing a visualization or doing a guided meditation or journaling or practicing your affirmations, go in with the energy that this is already in process. My manifestations are happening and I'm so excited and that's why I'm practicing. Not my manifestation isn't here yet. I need it to be here. The more I journal, the more I affirm, the more likely it is that it's going to come. Don't think that the more affirmations you repeat, the more you're likely to receive your manifestation. That's not the case. Your affirmations are rewiring your mind. They're not rewiring the universe. The universe already knows what you want and it will give it to you when you're ready. So you're priming your mind. You're getting your mind ready. So realize that it's a game of you. It's not the game of you and the universe when you're doing these things. It's a game of you getting your mind right and getting your mind available to seeing what you really want to see. And so those are the five things that you might consciously or unconsciously be doing that might be blocking you from getting what you really want to get. And I know it might be a little frustrating when you're trying so hard to manifest something, but that's the whole thing. You don't have to try so hard. Don't make it complex. Just allow it to come. It doesn't have to be as difficult as you're making it. It's a lot easier than you think. It takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of openness and flexibility and playfulness, but just allow yourself to receive. Don't try so hard. Don't put so much resistance in one basket and don't put so much energy in another basket. Just try and focus on feeling good and being open to seeing all your manifestations coming into life. If any of these resonated with you or if any of these tools and tricks helped you to shift your mindset and maybe help open some doors into the way you've been practicing your affirmations or the way you've been thinking about manifestation in general, I would absolutely love if you could share your favorite takeaways with me or leave a comment in the reviews just so other people can experience what you're experiencing. It would mean the absolute world to me if you could have help spread this knowledge, spread this awareness by leaving a review, sharing this on your Instagram, and just telling your friends. It means the absolute world to me when you tell me how much this podcast has helped you because that is my true, true goal. I just want you to realize how powerful you are and I try and give you good tidbits of information so thank you so much for spending some time with me today thank you for your energy thank you for your attention I absolutely am so appreciative of you and I'm so grateful that you were able to be a part of this episode and contribute to the energy so thank you so much I love you I am thinking of you and I wish you a very very beautiful day ahead have a beautiful one bye That's all I have for you guys, and I just want to say thank you again for spending some time with me. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, head over to my social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or go to my website if you want to subscribe to my email list, which is affirmation-addict.com. I cannot wait to hear from you guys, and I will talk to you guys super soon. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.